part of the fun of doing these uh, game recap on each sports team that I do for Calgary Sports is looking back on the journey that each team has taken on during the season. And with the case of the Calgary Hitmen here, we've definitely turned it around in the last couple months here. As for the first time in 2019 here, it's time for a first episode of... Hi there, it's Brett Hornby here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's time for another episode of My Calgary Hitman in 6. We're up to episode number 8 here as we'll look at games 37 to 42 in the 2018-19 WHL regular season here. And as we just recently turned the calendar here, we're definitely in the 2019 part of the 2018-19 season here. And as I mentioned in the opening there, the Calgary Hitman definitely in the last couple months here have really turned it on and started getting together and pulling together some wins here and uh, you know it's definitely exciting to see how get some great hockey in I mean obviously the Flames are also playing well here too so uh, definitely seen some good hockey here in Calgary early, late in 2018 and early 2019 here and as you remember here in the WHL the season's only 68 games long so uh, you know we're definitely going heading into the stretch drive here and trying to jockey up for position here and let the Hitman keep waiting along here. There will be games after 68 with potential playoff preview videos coming up. But uh, anyway, let's take a look at my notes here as this Calgary Hitman team ended the 2018 season. 2018, right before we get into 2019 with a win here. And, uh, you know, they almost had a perfect segment here. I mean, there was one game that uh, they did drop one big time, but... You know, not too many teams has won against this one particular team in the WHL here. So let's uh, start recapping games 37 to 42 for episode number 8 here. So of course, if, if you, of course, if, uh, you enjoy everything I do on my YouTube channel, just make sure you hit like, subscribe, especially if you're a big uh, Calgary Sports fan here. So let's, uh, let's dig right into episode 8 here. So game 37 actually literally was... On New Year's Day here, on Tuesday, January 1st here, and uh, for some reason I thought uh, I didn't have spoke in the last episode there, and I did a pin a comment here that actually the Calgary Hitmen took on the Victoria Royals, and not the Prince George Cougars, which uh, for some reason I said the Prince George Cougars here, but this was an afternoon game, 1 p.m. puck drop at the Scottish Big Sale Dome, so if you were able to... Uh, here we're up for it and catch some afternoon hockey on New Year's Day here. The Calgary Hitman uh, definitely started off 2019 with a win here with a big 6 to 3 victory over the Vancouver or the Victoria Royals here. They got uh, goals in this game came late in the first period here, which was 2 1 for the Hitman. And then they made it 5 2 for the Hitman after the second period with eventually the 6 3 win here. Guys who led the way here is uh, Carson Folk. Led the way with uh, two goals and assist here. And then let us have Hiramenko also uh, had uh, two assists with uh, Jake Kriske and Riley Stotts. Each had two assists in the game here. And then Jack McNaughton. He's definitely, his workload has definitely gotten a lot busier here with uh, they have been both the winning and injuries here. He picked up the win with 23 saves in and the Calgary Hitman in this game outshot the Royals 33 to 26 here and if you look at the Royals side of the puck a guy named Griffin Outhouse who was started in that for the uh, Royals he got chased he had five goals on him on 13 shots there so he definitely had a rough out in there and then uh, Brock Gould who uh, came relief was perfect with 19 saves there it was an empty netter that uh, for the Hitman had the uh, sixth goal there so 2019 started off with a win, just like how 2018 ended there when I took in that uh, game personally against the uh, Vancouver Giants there. So that was game number 37 here. So game 38, finally. I'd say if you will we'll sum up this game, it happened on Friday, January the 4th. The Calgary Hitmen took on divisional rival, the Red Deer Rebels, and that was a 7 p.m. 
puck drop at the Scotiabank Saladom, and we finally beat Red Deer. This has definitely been a team that's been in the thorn of the side for the Hitmen all all season here. But uh, you know, scoring came in this game in the second and third periods here because it was scoreless after one year. Hitman had a 2-1 lead after the second period, and they eventually beat the Red Deer Rebels with a 5-3 win here. Hitman also outshot the Rebels 29-23 here, which we definitely were able to get a lot of shots in here. But uh, this this guy stood out was Kale Zimmerman. He had, he had a big game with uh, two goals and assists. Definitely his best offensive performance of the season here. Also, you hear some other names that uh, still on the score sheet. Dakota Krebs, Lane Ryder, and Hunter Campbell. Each had two assists in this game. And then Caden Elder also had a solid game with a goal and assist there. And then Jack Benotton. He only needed to make 20 saves in the win here. So uh, definitely a great all-around performance for the Calgary Hitmen. And nice to finally get a win against the Rebels there. Ethan Anders for the... Rebel side of the puck, he had 23 saves in that game, so uh, it was definitely a lot busier there. But, uh, you know, the Hitman, it's always nice to finally get uh, a win against one of your divisional foes, especially in the second half of the season here. So that was game number 38. So game 39, which was on Saturday, January the 5th. This was the next afternoon at the uh, Scotiabank Salem. It was a 130 puck drop here, and we took on the... Medicine Hat Tigers here, another team that uh, potentially we are trying to jockey for position here in the WHL playoffs. And I should also hint, note here, since I like to bring up some former Flames, uh, Lyon McDonald played for the Medicine Hat Tigers in his junior days here. And then the way I can sum up this game is that the second period was was a difference for the Calgary Hitman here because uh, each team traded goals in the in each period there, but the the Hitman had two goals in the second period for a 4-3 win here. And uh, there was definitely a lot of shots in this game here as the Calgary Hitman outshot the Madison Hat Tigers in this one 42-36 there. I mean, at one point in this game, the Madison Hat Tigers did have a 2-1 lead there in the second period, but uh, the only player that really stood up for the Hitman who had a multi-point game was actually Igor Zamula, the... Philadelphia Flyers prospect had a goal and assist, and then uh, James Hanlon on the Madison Hat Tigers side of the puck there. He stood out with a two assist game for multi point games, so there was points throughout the roster here, but I tried to highlight the uh, who stood up the most there. Jack Nod once again with the win, 33 saves, and then uh, on the Tigers side of the puck, Jordan Hullett had 38 saves in the loss for them, but uh, you know, there definitely were a lot of shots fired in this game. This game actually was featured on Sportsnet. It was actually the Flames played the Philadelphia Flyers. That game started at 11 o'clock Mountain Air, and right after that game, this game actually was on Sportsnet with the CHL highlights. So, uh, you know, maybe if you take a look in the Sportsnet, you might get the odd hitman game on Sportsnet there if it's a CHL spotlight game. So uh, I was able to follow that game on uh you know, on TV and on the go on my smartphone when I was at the laundromat there. So, uh, definitely looked like a great game there. The bits that I did watch when I was on the road there. But that was game 39 here. And after that, that's when Calgary went out and start. When I get to the next games here, the Calgary Hitmen are off to Saskatchewan for a little road trip here. So, game number 40 here happened on Wednesday, January the 9th. The Calgary Hitmen took on the Boost Jaw Warriors here, and that was at Mosaic Place. 6 p.m. puck drop, and uh, this was definitely, uh, you know, an interesting game here. They actually went to a shootout here, and the uh, Calgary Hitmen continued on their winning streak with a 3 2 win in the shootout here. Teams traded goals in the second and third period with uh, goal assists or goal each, but uh, there was definitely uh, a little. They have a cliffhanger here is that uh, the Hitman scored the tying goal with 2.35 left in the third period by Dakota Krebs there. And then overtime didn't solve anything, but the Warriors did actually outshoot the Hitman in overtime 4-1. to one. But the overall, actually, the Hitman, it was pretty close in shots here. It was 37-35 for the uh, Calgary Hitman here. 
but it didn't take until the fourth round of the shootout to decide it here. Josh Prokoff did score the uh, winner for the uh, Calgary Hitman in the fourth round here. And uh, each team scored twice in uh, the initial three rounds here. Let's highlight uh, for the Hitman side of the puck. Jake Kriske missed the first attempt. But uh, James Malm, Carson Fook scored for the Hitman in the first three rounds here. If you look on the Warriors side of the puck, if you look on the Warriors side of the puck here, they had goals from Justin Amida and Braden Tracy. And then... Uh, and Tristan Langan and Luke Olmsby missed it for the Warriors there. Tristan Langlin was the one that won the first three rounds. And then Luke Ormsby is the one that missed for the Warriors there for the uh, shootout there. So it was a 3-2 win for the uh, Calgary Hitman, as I mentioned, in the shootout here. Jack McNaughton, 33 saves in the shootout winner. And uh, Adam Evanoff for the Warriors had 35 and uh, another thing to mention here is that uh, Jay Kriske is one of the top scorers in the for the Calgary Hitman. He actually had a fight in this game with uh, Hayden Taphorn in the third period here. So I uh, just decided to throw that in there. So, uh, you know, junior hockey, sometimes crazy things happen. Or, you know, maybe prove be the complete package and score and fight too. So that was game number 40. So game number 41, which was... Uh, Friday, July, or January the 11th, the Calgary Hitmen continued their Saskatchewan road trip by going up north and take on the Saskatoon Blades at the Saskatoon Center. That was the 7 p.m. puck drop here. And this was definitely another uh, exciting game here as it went to overtime and the Calgary Hitmen won this game 4-3 to three in overtime to extend their winning streak to number six games in a row here. And actually, the Calgary Hitman came back at one point from being down 3-1 to one here. Carson Fook actually tied the game with only 25 seconds to go in the third period there. So it was a situation where you pull the goalie and get the extra attacker on and keep attacking his own and hope to get the tying goal. And that's what happened in this game here. And Mark Kolesnik scored the winner for the Calgary Hitman at one, the 124 minute mark. So... Uh, you know, scored it late and went in overtime, so it's definitely a very dramatic win there. Another thing you could say about TV up with dramatics here, as I mentioned, it was 3-1 to one for the Blades at one time. Igor Zamula actually scored with 18 seconds to go in the second period to take a 3-2, to make a 3-2 for the Blades at the time there. So, Kyrie Haven definitely had some dramatic moments there with the uh, late goal in the second period, late goal in third, and then the overtime winner here. So, uh... Definitely get your money's worth here. We actually also played the Blades at a whole game by outshooting them 39 to 24 years. So we definitely got a well-deserved win in dramatic fashion here. So let's uh, look at some leaders on this particular game. Jake Kriske led the way with three assists. And then Mark Kolastic had two goals and an assist in this game, including was that the overtime winner. Igor Zamula also had the... Uh, Goal and assist there, that goal being the late in the second period there. Really, it's had a few players that had uh, multiple games too, uh, from Ryan Horkus Martherson. And Ryan Hughes had a goal and assist. Once again, Jake Monaghan had 21 saves for the win for the Calgary Ippen. And then Nolan Mayer for the Saskatoon Blades had uh, 35 saves and loss there. But uh, as I mentioned, the winning streak went up to six here. and. Calgary Hitman were 5-0 if you're keeping track in the six-game segment here. And then game 42 was definitely interesting to see, you know, a big litmus test here to see how well the Calgary Hitman can take on the CHL's number one ranked team, the uh, Prince Albert Raiders. So the next night, game 42, Saturday, January 12th, the Calgary Hitman made a trip up to Prince Albert here at the Hauser Center. 6 p.m. puck drop and uh, definitely... As I said in the opening there, we did win every game except one, and fortunately, we this was the game we did not win, and we definitely uh, got schooled by the Prince Albert Raiders here. It was a 7-3 win for the Prince Albert Raiders, Raiders here, but, uh, you know, it's a tough way to end up this six-game segment recap here, but uh, 
as I say, they're the top ranked team in the CHL here, and when I bring up their record here, not too many teams has been able to beat the Prince Albert Raiders, and as I say, this is one team that you're likely going to see them if they're not going to contend for the World Cup this year. This year be considered a disappointment here, but uh, you know the Hitmen they were down two nothing after one, five two after two, and then eventually lost this one. 7-3, which ended the winning streak at six games here. Also, the Prince Alder Raiders outplayed the Kyrie Hitman, outshot them 41-24 to here. So, uh, definitely the Prince Alder Raiders are much, much better than the Kyrie Hitman right now. And when I, when I shape up the playoff picture right now, this would be the team we actually would play in the first round right now. So, hopefully... We can maybe continue our strong play and move up a few speeds and maybe avoid playing the Prince Albert Raiders in the first round here, but uh, we still got some season to go here. The uh, Raiders had several players with uh, multi point games. Parker Kelly, two goals, seems to lead the way. But uh, I'll also highlight the uh, Calgary Hitman player. Riley Stotts actually had two goals for the Calgary Hitman, so he had two of the three goals for the Hitman. They also, uh, they also had a tough. Uh, they on the penalty kill there because uh, they were they got into some penalty trouble there and uh, the Raiders went two for five on the power play in this game and uh, and that definitely uh, does not help if you're taking on the cream of the crop there. Jack Monaughton actually was in for the whole game. He made 34 saves in the loss here and with goalies, both combination of uh, stronger play by uh, Jack Monaughton but also the fact that as when I get to the injury report here, he's kind of been the only uh, veteran goalie that they have right now. Or actually, he's a rookie, but uh, there's been some injuries on the team here, and there's been goalies call called up and down from other affiliate junior clubs here uh, to fill the net. But uh, the one guy that the Hitmen do have backing up Jack Monaughton is uh, Ethan Hine, who was a third round pick from the uh, Hitmen in the band draft in 2017. His uh, junior club is, is the Swiss Current uh, Legionnaires, and he actually was in town here uh, for the Max Midget Hockey Tournament here before he got called up to the team there. So hey, he is backing up Jack Knott right now, but he has not played any minutes yet for the Hitman. And then going back to uh, Goldie for the Prince Albert Raiders, Ethan Scott. I don't know if you could say he had an easy night for the, for the name, but he had 21 saves to the Raiders here. So now, listen to this record for the Prince Outer Raiders here is that they're 37, 5, 0, and 1 with 75 points for number one. Obviously, they're far and away number one in the WHL right now. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, number one ranked team in the CHL, the whole network there. So uh, I would say uh, there wasn't too much shame to uh, lose to the Prince Outer Raiders, but, uh, you know. We'll see if we how we can do them as we play them at least one more time here in the regular season here. Hopefully it'll be a little closer game, but uh you know, it's always tough to uh drop a drop one, but uh you know, it is what it is. Uh that's the competition right now in junior hockey. Sometimes you get uh, a group of guys that can really dominate and uh make a run for World Cup here. So uh before you get to the stats and Let's look ahead to the next episode here. Actually, the Calgary Hitman made a trade here during the six-game segment. They actually traded for Bryce Batter to the, I actually just mentioned the Prince Albert Raiders, for the rights to Quinn Olsen. And right now, they also swapped six-round picks in the uh, WHL band draft. But right now, Quinn Olsen is currently playing in the Alberta Junior Hockey League, which is with the, the Okotoks Oilers, who are... Uh, just south of Calgary right now, and uh, basically the you know the junior hockey leagues are kind of like the, I guess you could say kind of the farm team for the uh, you know the CHL team. So uh, we'll see how that turns out for the Calgary Hitmen here. And injuries, well, it's still Ty Carrier forward, and then goalie Carl Stankowski here. So uh, thankfully Zach Benton has uh, played strong for the Calgary Hitmen here in net. So. Uh, you know, I still got the same guys on on the injury report. No word on 
what about their return or their plane, but uh, that's what I can give for the uh, injury report here. So I'm going to go up to the website here at uh, hitmanhockey.com here to uh, look at some stats here, and I'll try to bring up some team stats as well for the, uh, see where the Hitman ranks in uh, the league when it comes to special teams and that. So I'll just bring it up here. And uh, when it comes to uh, player stats here, uh, I mean, uh, usual suspects are always uh, leading the way here. I mean, uh, Mark Klostic, 42 games, he has 29 goals, 17 assists for 46 points. And then Jay Kriske in 41 games for the Edmund, 19 goals, 27 assists for 46 points. And then James Malm, overall, he has in 40 games, he has... 16 goals, 27 assists for 43 points. And then uh, Igor Zamola, the defenseman, the defensive defenseman, 42 games, has 9 goals and 30 assists for 39 points. And they run up the top 5. Kaden Elder, 43 games. He also spends a time with Squid Current at the start of the year. He has 17 goals, 17 assists for 34 points there. So that's the top 5 here. And when it comes to goalies here, I'll just mention Jack Monoton here, who uh, has a uh, I'll bring up some uh, wins here. Same percentage. I know uh, when you, you go to these websites, uh, it doesn't bring up the board stats here, but uh, you know, Jack Benon, he's uh, 15 wins, 10 losses here, and goals against average is 331, but uh, same percentage, 888, but you know, there's definitely a lot more offense when it comes to uh, junior hockey here. So now if we look at uh, the team here, if you look at the, you know, standings here, and I say the Calgary Hitmen for the standings here right now are actually in a much better spot here as overall after 42 games. There are 21 wins, 17 losses, and they got three losses in overtime, and one issue here that gives them 46 points, and they're fifth in the Central Division, but... They're now in the second wildcard spot in the Eastern Conference there, which right now you would draw them with the Prince Alley Raiders for a first-round matchup. So they're six points ahead of the Brandon Wheat Kings, who are outside looking in, but they got two games in hand on us. But uh, well, it does any good for uh, if they win them. But, uh, you know, the Hitman has definitely excuse me, come a long way compared to where we were at the start of the season here, so uh, I'm definitely uh, impressed by how the uh, Calgary Hitman has turned it around here, and uh, you know, I think maybe it was just time to uh, look at uh, getting used to being under Steve Hamilton as head coach here. Actually, I couldn't find the uh, stats here for the, uh, I'll, I'll do that for the next video here, about uh, where the team ranks in special teams here, but I know that when it both comes to uh, power play and penalty kill, I did find it last night there, but they didn't have it queued up here. That Actually, the Calgary Hitmen are in the top half of the league when it comes to penalty kill and special teams here, and the 22 teams are in the top 10. So uh, I'll, I'll bring that up and give percentages here in the next video here. So now, speaking of the next video here, let's look ahead what will be Episode 9 for the Calgary Hitmen. When we look at games 43 to 48 for the Calgary Hitmen in the 2018-19 WHL schedule and it actually works so perfectly that uh, it takes you up right up to the end of January there because after that the Corral series that I'll make a separate video on I did that uh, you know the Calgary Hitmen are going to play three games at the old Stampede Corral here and wear uh, jerseys from the past here I'll make a separate video here about my preview about the Corral series here, as I actually do have my tickets here, and I'll give you my take on what I'm looking forward to in that video. And then I think after the Corral series, I'll do a recap video on just the whole experience of watching games in the old Stampede Corral here. But that's not till February here, but it works out perfectly that uh, those games will happen in one episode there. So, uh, so if that's in February there. So if you look at episode nine here. Game 43, which is the next game the Calgary Hitman will play. 
on Saturday, January the 19th. We head up to the road to the QE2 to take on the Edmonton Oil Kings. That's a 1.30 puck drops for afternoon delight at Rogers Place. And then the next afternoon, game 44, the Calgary Hitmen come back home here on Saturday, January the 20th. They take on the Red Deer Rebels. That's a Scotch Big Seldom 4 p.m. puck drop. And then game 45, I promise this time they're taking on the Prince George Cougars at home. That's uh, Friday, January 25th, 7 p.m. puck drop at the Scotia Big Seldom. And then game 46 on Sunday, January the 27th, they end up their homestand with the Kootenai Ice. That's a 2 p.m. puck drop. And then on game 47, they make a couple trips. They make the trip down the uh, maybe Trans-Canada, go back to Saskatchewan for a couple games. And game 47, Tuesday, January the 29th. The Kyrie Hitman take on the Regina Pats. That's a 6 p.m. puck drop at the Branch Center. And then to wrap up episode 9, and to wrap up their play in January, on Wednesday, January 30th, the Kyrie Hitman take on the Swift Current Broncos at the Innovation Credits Union IPlex. That's what they named the building. At a 6 p.m. puck drop there. And, uh, you know, that leads up to the end of episode 9 there. And... That will get them ready to do the Corral series here, which will be interesting to see here. So that's the latest episode of My Calgary Hitman and Six here for episode eight. Of course, if you enjoy everything I do on my YouTube channel, just make sure you hit like, subscribe, or you know, maybe feel free to make a comment here. And uh, as I say, the Calgary Hitman has definitely turned it around here in the last couple months here and got themselves actually in a playoff spot here and maybe in position here to maybe try to jockey himself up the stands a little more if they continue their strong play here and maybe try to match up with a more favorable opponent for the first round here. So uh, as I always say, I'll see you at the next video for episode 9 of my Calgary Hitman and 6.